formation of fossils. We call our the remains of traces and of um, ancient to living organisms. Not all dead organisms become fossils. Fossils form only under con certain conditions. Conditions for fossil formation. Most plants and animals are eaten or decay when they die, leaving no evidence that they ever lived. Think about the chances of an apple becoming a fossil. If it is on the ground for many months, it will decay into a soft, rotting bump. Eventually, uh, insects and bacteria consume it. However, some conditions increase the chance of fossil formation. An organism is more likely to become a fossil if it has hard parts such as shells, teeth, or bones, like the fish in figure 2. Unlike a soft apple, hard parts do not decay easily. Also, an organism is more likely to form a fossil if it is buried quickly again after it dies. If layers of sand or mud bury an organism quickly, decay is slowed and or stopped. Fossils come in all sizes. You might have seen pictures of dinosaur fossils. Many dinosaurs uh, were large animals and large bones were left behind when they died. Not all fossils are large enough for you to see. Sometimes it is necessary to use a microscope to see fossils. Tiny fossils are about, called microfossils. My, the microfossils in figure 3 are about each about the size of a speck of dust. Figure 2. A fossil can form if an organism with hard parts such as fish is buried quickly after it dies. A dead fish falls into a river dur during a flood. Its body is rapidly buried by mud, sand, or other sediment. Over time, the body decomposes, but the hard bones become a fossil. The sediments hardened into a rock are uplifted and eroded, which exposes the fossil fish on the surface. Figure, c figure 3. Details of microfossils can be seen only under a microscope. Types of preservation. Fossils are preserved in many different ways. As shown in figure 4, there are many fossil ways fossils can form. Preserved remains. Somet sometimes the actual remains of organisms are preserved as fossils. For this to happen, an organism must be completely enclosed in some material over a long period of time. The, this would prevent if it if from being exposed to air or bacteria. Generally, prevent preserved remains are 10,000 or a few years in age. However, insects preserved in amber shown in the photo at the beginning of this lesson can be millions of years old. Carbon films. Sometimes when an organism is buried, exposure to heat, the pressure, forces, gases, or and liquid out of organisms' tissues, this leaves only the carbon behind. A carbon film is the fossilized carbon outline of an organism or part of an organism. Mineral replacements. Replicas or copies or organisms can form from minerals in ground water. They fill the pore spaces or replace the tissues of dead organisms. Petrified wood is for the example. Preserved remains. Organisms trapped in amber, tar pits, or ice can be preserved over thousands of years. This baby mammoth was preserved in ice for more than 10,000 years before it was discovered. Carbon film. Only a carbon film remains of this ancient fern. Carbon films are usually shiny, black, or brown. Fish, insects, and plants and leaves are often preserved as carbon films. Mineral replacement. Rock forming minerals dissolved in groundwater can fill in pore spaces or replace the tissues of dead organisms. This petrified wood formed when silica filled in the spaces between the cell walls in a dead tree. The wood petrified when the CiO2 crystallized. Mold. Sometimes all that remains of an organism it is, is it fossilized imprint of impression. A mold is the impression in a rock left behind 
an ancient organism. A mold can form when sediment hardens around a buried organism. As the organism decays over time, a impression of its shape remains in the sediment. The sediment can eventually turns to rock. Cast sometimes after a mold forms, it is filled with more sediment. A cast is a fossil copy of an organism made when a mold of the organism is filled with sediment or mineral deposits. The process is similar to making the gelatin dessert using a pod molded pan. Some animals, some animals leave fossilized traces of their movement of an activity. A trace fossil is preserved if it evidence of the activity of an organism. Trace fossils include tracks, footprint, and nest. These fossils help scientists learn about the characteristics and behaviors of animals. The dinosaur tracks in figure 4 reveal clues about the dinosaur's size, its speed, and where, uh, where there it, whether it was traveling alone or in a group. Mold this mold of an ancient trilobite formed after it was buried by sediment and then decayed. The sediment hardened, leaving an impression of its shape in the rock. Cast, the cast was formed when the mold was later filled with sediment that then hardened. Molds and casts show only the exterior or outside features of organisms. Ancient environments. Scientists who study fossils are called paleontologists. Paleontologists use the principle of uniformitarianism to learn about ancient organisms and their environments where their where ancient organisms live. For example, they can compare fossils of ancient organisms with organisms living today. The trilobite fossil and the horseshoe crab in Figure Five look alike. Horseshoe crabs today live in shallow water on the ocean. Floor, partly because trilobite fossils look like horseshoe crabs, paleontologists infer that trilobites also lived in shallow ocean water. Shallow seas. Today, Earth's continents are mostly above sea level, but sea level has risen. Flooding Earth's continents many times in the past, for example, a shallow ocean covered much of North America 450 million years ago. As illustrated in the map in Figure 6, Fossils of organisms that live in the shallow seas, shallow oceans, like the sea shown in Figure Six, helped scientists reconstruct what the sea floor looked like at that time. Figure Five, partly because of trilobite fossils look like a present-day horseshoe crab, scientists infer that the trilobite lived in an environment similar to the environment where a horseshoe crab lives. Ancient environments, scientists of Figure 6 studying fossils help scientists recon reconstruct what the North America seafloor looked like 100 million years ago. Of years ago, most of what would become the United States was covered by a shallow sea during that time. Past climates, you might have heard of people talking about global climate change. Or maybe you've read about climate change. Evidence indicates that Earth's present-day climate is warming. Fossils show that Earth's climate have warmed and cooled many times in the past. Plant fossils are especially good for indicators of climate change. For example, fossils of ferns and other tropical plants dating to the time of the dinosaurs reveal the Earth was very warm 100 million years ago. Tropical forests and swamps cover much of the land as illustrated in Figure 7. Figure 7, about 100 million years ago, tropical forests and swamps cover much of North America. Dinosaurs also lived on Earth at the same time. Millions of years later, the swamps and forests were gone because the coarse grasses grew in the places. Huge sheets of ice called glaciers spread over parts of North America, Europe, and Asia. Fossils suggest that some species that lived during this time, such as the woolly mammoths shown in figure 8, were able to survive the colder climate. Fossils and organisms such as ferns and mammoths help scientists learn about Asian organisms and past environments. In the following lessons, you will 
to read how scientists use fossils and other clues such as the order of rock layers and radioactivity to learn about the ages of Earth's rocks. Figure 8, the woolly mammoths were well adapted to a cold climate. The mammoths whose teeth could grind the coarse grasses that grew in the cold climate.